Good morning and welcome back to our draw along sessions. It feels like it's been an age. Um, so do give me some indicator that you can hear and see us, OK, because obviously it's been a while since I set all the equipment up. Um, so I just want to make sure that everything's working and we haven't got any technical issues. Our Internet has been a bit fuzzy the last couple of days as well. So if I drop in and out, that's why. But at the moment, touch wood, it's um, it's holding true. It's doing all right. So the first in what seems like for a long time, we're starting a new term with our new thing, which is marine animals. And today we are going to be drawing this seahorse. So, hi Jill, Emily and Freya, thank you, I know we're okay then, oh good, okay. I'll carry on rambling then in that case. So we're going to be drawing the seahorse, and if you've never drawn a seahorse before, you are not alone, neither have I. So it's another new challenge for me. Um, and I've got some facts about the seahorse as well to share with you, quite fascinating animals. Um, so yeah, the first of, our, first of our sessions is that, I'm just going to be drawing using a normal HB pencil, nothing special. I'm using a putty rubber just because they work really well for removing lines and because you can mould them if you need to um, remove a fine piece of detail, they're great for that. But normal rubber will work as well. And then I'm only using a um, small range of colours today. I've gone with yellows, a couple of oranges and like a sandy brown. And then as I zoomed in on the picture, I noticed that there are some green areas as well. So just a, like a tinge of green. So I've picked out a green as well. Um, Michael's panicking next to me. Michael's joining us today because he didn't pick out the green, so you can borrow mine. <laughs> and yeah, that's it. So my, I'm using watercolour pencils. You don't have to have used watercolour pencils. I will do, be demonstrating as well how you can sort of level up your picture by adding the water to make it more like a painting. Pi from Pi and his brother Oscar is joining as well. Welcome, welcome. How's your week going to look? Is it, this going to be a nice start to our week? It is ours. We're going to the cinema after this. Um, I wanted to go see The Little Mermaid, but I've been outvoted and we're going to see Spider-Man. I'm not happy. <laughs> but I do get to sit and chill for an hour, so that's good. So, should we get started? So, once again, so I'm gonna, I'm actually going to be working portrait this time around. So all the last time I seem to be working landscape, so I'm working on portraits, my A4 pages, this way round. Oh, that's the camera, that's a good start, isn't it? Um, if you haven't got your reference image, then if you look in the discussion area, you should find it on the... Uh, event page but it's the same image that was used to advertise it so you can pull it up there now I look, although i'm using these colors you can like like with all of our draw alongs there are no rules so you can completely change the colors of your seahorse if you want to and um, you can make it bright pink if you wanted to and just use some of the tips and advice i give you as we go along so we'll start off by just sketching the the basic outline and again if you've watched me before you know this is the bit that causes me the most trouble so what tends to happen is that I don't use the right part of my page or I draw too big and can't get everything in. So I'm really going to try today and I'm going to try something new by drawing sort of like a start point and an end point to my seahorse to begin with. So a line going down. I'm just going to raise that camera up. Hi, Gemma. Thank you for joining us. Are any parents joining in today as well? I've always been that's a nice. It's a good thing to do. Well, that's what I'm doing, Michael. We're sitting and drawing together. So I'm drawing like a diagonal line because that's the what I'm seeing happening with this image of the seahorse. So that gives me a start point and an end point for my seahorse. And then I'm going to sketch in the, the shape I can see. So this is all very rough and I'm sketching very lightly so that it's easy for me to sort of rub out these guidelines after. This your pencil's broken already. <laughs> Get another pencil, Michael. So again, really, really rough. I'm not, this isn't particularly accurate at this moment. I just want to make sure I can fit him all onto the page. I'm assuming of him. I do that all the time, don't I? He looks like, he looks like he could have a pregnant belly, which in the seahorse world, you might already know that the mouths carry, can carry the babies and they birth them. Between five and 1,500 babies. That's mad. <laughs> I thought two was hard enough. <laughs> Think of all the washing. <laughs> Use my pot, Michael. Oh, yeah. So I'm happy that I've managed to get in for a, for a change the whole seahorse on my sketch. So that's a good start. So now that I'm happy with that rough guideline, what I'm going to do is sort of go in with some more details and sort of smarten things up a bit so it's a bit more accurate. Oh, Rowan, sorry. Hi, Rowan. I don't, now, my memory is shocking, so don't expect me to remember that. I am terrible. I, I forget my own children's names, to be fair. Um, and I know Nan's joining in. Jill's definitely joining in with the uh, draw-alongs with Emily and Freya. 
Hello and good morning to Erin. I remember that one. I know you've been joining us a long time, Erin. So I've got the basic forms in. I'm going to go in now with a bit more detail. So the eye is quite low, low down and near the nose. So I'm going to make sure I get that in the right place. And now I'm going to sketch in. He's got a very long, thin nose. And then I'm going to go in to get the shape of the neck. So this is where they get the name. So a seahorse is an actual type of fish. So it is a form of a fish. And um, obviously they're called a seahorse because they've got this long neck with the face pointing downwards and the long snout, a bit like a horse. That's why how they got their name. I don't know. I don't like it. So take so if you're not happy with the with the form, just take your time in getting it right because at this stage, if you then start adding colour and stuff, you, it's kind of like you can't undo it. So you want to make sure you get the the actual outline at a point where you're fairly happy with it at least. I know this is my danger. Is I have a habit of rush in this stage. So I tend to, you guys are now teaching me, really, by doing these draw-alongs with me, to just take my time a little bit more on this initial stage. It's almost segmented. You can see where, as I'm drawing it in, it looks like he's reticulated a little bit, like a snake's body, isn't it? These little segments. Now, what's interesting... This fin that you see that's going to come down here, that's what they use to swim. That little like dorsal fin, they just flutter it to swim. And then I'm sure I read this right. They've got fins either side of the head and that's what they use to steer. So they're a slow moving fish because obviously a, a fish uses their towel to swim and propel themselves through the water. The seahorse doesn't, although he's got a towel, that's what he just uses to anchor himself onto things. So I learned something new today because I did not know that. And I'm going to make sure I try and get all of the swirl of his towel in because it's quite iconic really, isn't it? You could, if you wanted to adapt your drawing and you're going to challenge yourself, you could put in some foreground and background as well. You could have him actually holding onto the branch of some kind of sea plant or seaweed if you wanted to. I'm not going to challenge myself that that much first week back. <laughs> I think I'll be uh, taking too much of a challenge on by doing that. So again, basic shapes I'm getting in at the moment. Just, just get it on the page. Oh, we've got messages. Hi from S Sebastian. Welcome. You're new. Thank you for joining us. I feel like I recognise the name. So maybe I've seen you commenting elsewhere. Um, Gemma, it's not. It's Rowan. It's fine. I haven't been on live for a while. Hannah, mine's a baby seahorse. Ah. Oh. Cute and hi from, is it Moss and Sal? Bless you, Michael. Or Mose and Sal. You look like new names as well. Oh, we've got newbies. Yay, new people. So it, if you are new, you might have seen it on a post, but just to let you know that if you upload your finished picture to my post later on this evening, so between 6 and 9 p.m., <laughs> bless you again, are we, are we coming down with a cold? It's a new term, of course we are. Um, <laughs> if you upload your image, I will give you written feedback. So I'll tell you what you've done amazingly. And then I'll give you a tip for what you can do next time to improve. Michael's going to sneeze again. <laughs> I can see it. I can see it building. So now that I've got the basic outline structure, I'm quite happy with that. I can rub out those guidelines because for no other reason other than they will confuse me if I leave them on the page. Too much going on. I'm quite pleased with that. And what I'm going to do as well, oh, this seahorse that we're drawing, we've got um, some markings on it, some white markings. So I'm going to plot them in as well. 
so that when I start get breaking out the colours, I don't forget to leave some white space. He's got he's mostly yellow, but he's got these little white patches everywhere. And again, you could if you're changing your colours, you can obviously change the colour of the patches as well if you wanted to. What do you think you're going to do, Michael? Are you going to keep it to these colours or...? I've got all the colours that I need for that one, so I'm not going anywhere back to get some new colours. <laughs> so because he's already picked out the colours for this seahorse, he's not going to walk all the way over to his desk, which is literally one foot away, to change the colours. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> that was just too much effort, isn't it, Michael? It is a Monday morning after all. <laughs> he's even got some of these on his towel as well and notice these, these little ridges on his towel he almost looks like he's a bit made a lego if you look at carefully if I, you zoom in if you've got an electronic device that you're looking at where you've got the little reticulations again you've got these little bumps that you can see I'm just going to add on some of them as well Cool. And then I'm going to go back to the eye because I kind of just rushed that into a dot. But when again, when you zoom into that eye, it's almost like a star bar burst effect. It's not a circle. There's like, I don't know what you describe that. It's like a burst effect from the from the circle. And then there's another bit going around as well. So I'm going to sketch that in. So I've got all my basic shapes now. So now for me, it is going to be about adding colour. If you're not at that point already, don't don't worry. It, it would be really, really coincidental if everybody was working to the same pace. Um, and I know the majority of the time there's normally a lot of young people that work much faster than me. And I'm playing catch up all the time, but that's fine. We're all working to our own pace. Like a pipe towel, says Seb. It is, yeah. I've seen um, pipe fish we have in the UK, which must be... They're very similar looking, but instead of upright, they're like a long, skinny. They have the same shape face. They're a long, skinny fish, and they're called pipe fish. I'm going to bring up some uh, more, more facts whilst we're here. So there are 40 known species of seahorse. So not, not that many relative really to other fish. Um, but other than crabs, very few marine creatures eat them as their bodies are too bony and indigestible. I imagine with this long tail, they've obviously got a lot of bone there. They're not massive animals, are they? So there's not a lot of food on them. Michael, that's looking excellent. That's a really good outline. Well done. I think it's good. I like it. Keep going with it. Do you want me to show? Okay. So I have to, go I have to get rid of my other one because it is just... Oh, you restarted. Yeah. Okay, so Michael's outline is this at the moment. I like the, the way you've got the reticulations here. He's not happy with his towel. And I can tell you what's happened is you've done a me. <laughs> you've done a pip in that we've started too big in the head. So you haven't got enough space to get the towel in. So you've had to shrink it down. But I think that's a good way of adapting it because this is really good and you don't want to have to lose all that. Mm -hmm. So you could either cut it off, in which case you're not going to have the curly towel, which you'd not, you'd, I, I think what you've done is the, the right way to, to approach it because you, you want to keep that iconic curly tail in there. So keep going with it. And I'm going to make a new type of seahorse. Ooh, are you going to like create a new species? That'd be cool. So I'm going to go in with my yellows first of all. And as I go, I'll probably add some orange tones as well. And it's really important to keep referencing your picture because obviously you've got the outline, but you also need to know how the shading changes from image to, uh, from different aspects of the of the seahorse. So this first bit up the top, the little crown bit, which has got a name. Let me see. Let me see my facts. Let me just consult my notes. Da, da, da. Where is it? There was a fact on this. They have a bony crown on their heads. That's obviously what I've started colouring here. Um, called a coronet. And like a fingerprint or a zebra stripes, they're completely unique to that individual. So no two seahorses will look or have the same coronet. That's cool. Cool fact. Erin, I love your seahorse. Thank you, Erin. You're always so kind. Thank I'm quite pleased with how this is turning out since I've never done it before. <laughs> I'm quite pleased with the outline. Oh, my God, my seahorse is so cute. Oh, I'm very much looking forward to seeing it. And then we're going to have little stories for our seahorses. We're going to give them names and characters. 
So what I'm doing, I don't know if you can see, I'm sticking with my lightest yellow and I'm picking out the lightest highlighted areas on the seahorse and, and shading them in with that colour. If I switch and change between yellows, what I tend to do is muddle them up. <laughs> so I'm going to try and place down the highlighted areas first so that I can create the form. So even with your colouring in, with your shading and the way that you change your colours, you're able to make your image look more realistic. So keep referencing back to your if your picture. Don't just do it from memory or imagination. Just keep glancing back at it and going, oh, yeah, there's a, there's a highlight the area there. There's a, And by highlight, I mean like a lighter area. It's not so dark. And I can see on the front of his little ridges, there's some more lighter yellow. So I'm going there. And really, it's the lighter leather, yellow that shows you where the ridges. There aren't black lines. Although I drew it with a pencil, on the actual image, there aren't black lines. There's lighter spaces of yellow. Joe said, I think coronet is such a cool word, like a crown, but better. Uh, yeah, it is, isn't it? Amy said, I've just explained that you have a shark, an octopus, etc. scheduled for other days. I can't remember them all, though. Yes, yeah, so every Monday now, I think we've got six, might be seven. Um, same time every Monday. Next week, I think, is a dolphin, which is something I was obsessed with as a teenager. I used to draw them all the time. You went swimming with them. I did. I went swimming with them in Malta. Um, but I haven't drawn one for many, many years. So it would be good practice for me. We've got, we haven't got a shark because, and there's a reason for this, Joe was a bit disappointed with that as well. I did, we were going to have a shark, but I really struggled to find a good reference image. They were very dark, all the photos, and I think that would have been really difficult for us to cop, like, copy from, um, which made me wonder why. So it must be quite difficult for people to get good action shots of sharks, I guess, because literally who's going to put themselves <laughs> in the way of a shark to get a good photo? I know I wouldn't, <laughs> whereas a nice seahorse is not a threat to us, is it? <laughs> but uh, we have, I'm really looking forward to, we've got a lovely image of a humpback wow, which I'm really excited about. That's one of our last ones. And I think the last one is a really funky looking crab. Maybe that's why I wanted to go and see The Little Mermaid, because I had all this in my head. <laughs> I'm not doing a mermaid, though. We've not included a mermaid. There's another two films we haven't watched, though. Yeah, I'll put it on the list. <laughs> well, oh, well done, Joe. So we have dolphin, then octopus, sea turtle. That's one of your favourites, isn't it, Michael? I can't wait for that. And then wow, and then crab. A nice, nice term before we go into the summer. Should be quite cool. That, yeah, it's gonna be tricky, isn't it? It's a lot of detail on an octopus. Should be cool though. It will be. Of course it will. I'll be doing it. He yeah. says he says nothing. <laughs> All right, Michael. I just said something. <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> joking. So I've got I've used my lightest yellow. I'm going with my next like the the less pale yellow now to put some more colour down. So I'm gonna go back to back to the face. And I'm sort of filling a lot of the white gaps. This won't be all, though, because then I'm going to go over with an orange in the darker area. So I've created straight away three different tones. When we talk about tones, and I might say this on your feedback, you know, you need to add variation to your tone to make something look more 3D, more realistic and alive. So um, if you haven't got a lot of variation to your tone, what that means is you've used the same sort of darkness throughout. If, if I say to you, you need to add some lighter tones, then obviously like that pale yellow or whites, or it might be that you've got loads of light tones, but not enough darker tones. So having good variation in your tone, in your, in your drawings, definitely, definitely helps to make them look a little bit more realistic and less cartoony. Erin loves seed turtles as well. They are awesome creatures, aren't they? And Joe's most excited by the octopus. It's funny how we've all got different different favourites from this. 
this term. So as you work down the body, you can see there's a lot more darker tones. So, but I'm not going to try and get that with the yellow. I'm going to use the orange for that. So I'm just placing color on. And again, if you're using watercolor pencils, we don't have to be too fussy because we can use the water to spread them and to blend the different tones and the different colors as well. So this is just about getting the color down on the page. And I can see looking at the towel, there's much more orange tones in the towel as well. So again, just placing the yellow down and I'll be using the yellow, uh, the orange on top of that. Very sketchy. I'm going to leave the fin because I want to, uh, when you look at the back fin, there's, it's really green. So I'm not going to do, I'm just literally just going to be a light, really light bit of yellow there. And now I'm going to go in with the orange. No, I lie. I'm actually going to do the eye because I've broken my rule of, I always start with the eyes, don't I? And I okay. just completely missed it out today. So I'm going to go do the eye first. So I'm just going to, you get what, your, your arm's aching. You're out of no, practice. Like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I think you're just a bit hypermobile. I definitely And it's, it's because we're out of practice. Because I'm feeling it in my oh. hand now. <laughs> I'm doing the starburst bit with the black. Oh, we're on the eye now, aren't we? Yeah, I've jumped. I've jumped. You don't have to copy me, though. And I notice again, there's a little bit of green tinge in that eye. So I'm just going to put a little bit of green around and then the yellow. Mm, slight darker tone there as well, I can see. And then the orange. So again, keep I'm looking at I'm looking at the reference image more than I'm looking at my own page. So I can work out where the darker tones sit rather than just assuming and guessing. He's got a little bit along the top of his nose. And I know my picture's looking quite orange compared to the reference image. Oh, but again, so that's why I've brought in a sandy colour as well. So I will, it's all about building layers up, really. I will be using that to get the right colour or closer to the colour anyway. But it doesn't matter if I don't because there's no right or wrong with art. That's my interpretation. So that's the colours I'm using. I think that's why I was good at art, or not good at art, but enjoyed art at school. When I, I had to go to school, obviously. Um, I didn't have to, but I, I did go to school. Uh, I wasn't very good at being told what to do. So with art, it was a little bit more free. And the rules were a little bit more relaxed. So I got on with art. Yeah, I'd say that's still true as well. Still don't like being told what to do. It has to be my idea. I think Elliot gets that from me, my youngest. There you go. Oh, your colours are looking good, Michael. Mm -hmm. Remember to keep looking at your image. Don't try and do it all from memory. I'm going to rub some of these uh, pencil, harsher pencil lines out as I go because they'll be difficult to get rid of in a bit. I am done. You're done? You can't be. You can't be because you haven't got the little spots and patterns on him. 
You see? And you can't be done because I'm not. <laughs> uh, oh, phone's going off. So, so look at your photo, Michael. There's much more orange in the bottom of the towel. So we're gonna I'm focusing on that next. Orange tones. And there's like a shadow going over the top of the towel as well, from probably being cast by his own body. So that's gonna be darker. Oh. How are we getting on everyone? And if you are done, Michael, what could you add to yours? You could give him some babies. No? You'd be looking after some of his 1,500 babies. No, uh, I'm not putting 1,500. <laughs> that would keep you busy, wouldn't it? That's your task today. <laughs> Drawing 1,500 baby seahorses. Buy them, can I make a few? You can put a few in. Try not to press so hard with your pencil, Michael. Try and go a bit lighter. Right. Oh, lots of comments. Gemma, good. Amy, good. Deep in concentration here. Yeah, I get like that. That's so why I go silent every now and then. Um, Erin, I name my seahorse Sam. Sam the seahorse. That's cute. And then Gemma, mine's so colourful. Oh, awesome. So have we gone, have people opted for doing different colours rather than using the reference image too much that's nice and it's nice when it comes down to sitting and um writing some feedback because you'll see such varied ideas and it makes it interesting so you can see this is a much darker tone now so this is really helping me to sort of build up depth you've got that really i've got some white areas some really pale yellows a darker yellow and orange and now this darker browny color So straight away, you can see just from that little area, you can get a sense of the shape and it's not flat. And that's just by using tone effectively and just making sure you've got that some, some variation there. I think I'll use this same colour to add the little spots in as well, but I'll do that after. I'm going to just concentrate on getting the form right right now. to some facts for you what else do we have they only live for between one and four years so they don't have a long life um they range in size but they are always still very small so they can be anything from half an inch to 14 inches in size um this dwarf seahorse holds the record for the world's slowest fish swimming just five feet per hour that's probably slower than a starfish isn't it I'm slow. Yeah. Well, I'm just thinking marine animals here, but mm. yeah, possibly. Um, the UK has two species of sea seahorse in its waters, the short-snouted and the spiny, also long as known as the long-snouted. But it's illegal to kill, take or disturb seahorses in UK waters and the area they are found in is protected as well. So you can't keep a, a UK seahorse as a pet. But I do know that people can keep other seahorses um, a bit like when you keep keep marine fish or tropical fish, you are able to set up the marine tanks for seahorses. But I wouldn't recommend this. And, this, and the only reason I know this is just from personal experience. So years ago, when I was a teenager, I kept a tank of tropical fish. And they were quite hard to look after. And marine fish are like the next step up and they need a lot more care. They're a lot more fragile and can be upset by changes in the water very easily. So I... I looked into them and I thought, mm, if I'm already finding it difficult looking after tropical fish, I probably shouldn't look after marine fish. And then seahorses are like a level up from marine fish. They're even more fragile and, and again, slight changes and, they, and you, they can die. So I was like, you know what? It just wouldn't be responsible for me to, to take care of something like that when I struggle with a houseplant. So I did not. 
Which type is this one? You know, I don't know. I'm going to get set Michael a task because he's sitting there looking not busy. So, <laughs> Michael, um, use your phone to Google, put yellow seahorses, see if you can find one that looks like this, and then we can work out what species it is. I think that would be good to know. Yep. He's on it. You're talking to yourself, Michael. First sign of madness, that. <clears throat> it's all right. You're in good company. Would you say yellow seahorse? Yellow seahorse. Just look in the images. Yeah. And then find one that, oh, that, that's it. That, that, yeah, no, next one along. I think that's it. Oh, it's just a stock photo. It doesn't tell you what it is. So you, you want to find that and then find if you can, if it takes you to a website that teaches you what that seahorse is. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Good little bit of research task going on there. Hippocampus cuda. Let's have a look. Yellow seahorse. Scientific Hippocampus name. cuda. Yeah, it's a scientific name. So where's the... See if you can find me some facts on it. Look, there's a Wikipedia page there, because obviously that's so reliable. <laughs> we'll give it a go. Do you want me to read it out loud? Or? Yeah, if you can. That name... Hippocampus cuda. Cuda. It's a species of seahorse, also known as a common seahorse. A stereo seahorse? Let's have a look. It's a common seahorse, estuary seahorse. Yellow seahorse or spotted seahorse. Yeah, we can see the spots on them, can't we? The common name sea pony. The common name is a sea pony? Yeah. Oh, okay. Has been used for population, formerly treated as a separate species. So it's, a, it's not a rare type of seahorse, but it looks the things. Yeah. They're near threatened. They're threatened. Oh, they are. They're Wait. threatened. Uh, I think that no, vulnerable. They're vulnerable. Yeah. So this, yeah. So the numbers aren't great. Is that because of the state of the water? Where are they found? Does it say what location? Um, I'll have a look. Japer looks like it might be a seahorse. <laughs> And Erin's on a green seahorse. Gemma, I'm done. It's not, it's, it's Rowan, isn't it? Well done, Rowan. So if you're done and you're you're spent, you've got no more in you, then that's cool. We always finish our drawings by signing them. So you need to put your signature on them because that's what every artist does. If you've got more in you, then you could look at either adding some baby seahorses like Michael's done, or you could add in some foreground and background image as well, but and only they, if you want to. They live in... The Indo Pacific, Indian Pacific. Let's, let me see. The Indo Pacific. That's right. It's the only sea house on the sea house seahorse on the eastern Pacific coast, ranging from California to Peru. Mm. Definitely not a UK one, then. No. Find an image of a UK one. Let's see what they look like. I bet they're not as colourful. <laughs> Why do I feel that straight away that we are not going to have as should exciting? I, should I just put a UK seahorse? Yeah. Mm. You found one. They're all brown. Yeah, I thought they would be. Brown, green. Probably blend into this mm. environment, don't they? <laughs> brown, greeny, murky oh, Brit waters. Britain's endangered seahorse is a yellow one. Oh, okay. But this is a different one. Yeah, it's like, it looks like that's fur. I've had this green in my hand for ages, so I'm going to put that down and try and create those lines that you can see. On the fin. Imagine finding a seahorse skeleton. Oh, you you asking that genuinely? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's tiny, tiny little bones, but lots yeah. of them. No, I meant like a um, like the body. Yeah. Like washed up. That'd be quite cool. Because it is just hard rock, basically. Your skin. No, it's fish. Mm. It, like, looks like it, it looks like it. Looks like a crocodile, yeah. doesn't it? Almost, but no, it's. 
the fish, so I'd imagine have the same sort of texture as a fish. Mm. Can we see Michael's picture? Okay. There we go. Oh, they're small. So Michael's done. Is it a daddy seahorse and one of the babies? Yeah. All the rest are over here somewhere. The yeah. other, the other fourteen hundred ninety nine. They're over there. <laughs> That's cute. And he's not got his markings yet because he's a baby. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. This is how small they look. I like the weedy sea dragon. Is that a type of, is that a species? Do you want to Google that? Google that, Michael. <laughs> how many times a day do we say that? Let's Google that. Let's find out. Weed. Is there any other learning method? <laughs> weedy. Weedy sea dragon. Sea dragon. Oh, they're so cool. Show us. Oh, well, Mark was impressed. Oh, they are cool. That is beautiful. Where are they extinct? extinct? They look like a dinosaur, don't yeah. they? That one's not a real picture. Oh, is it? Oh, that's a. That one's a. Oh, see, no, there's videos of them. They are real. Oh, uh, Erin, that's lovely, Michael. And you and Emily and Freya have said that as well. Okay. Okay. No thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Oh, they're quite cool, then. They are cool. They do look like a dragon, then. Mm. Big flippers, like like it, what you'd imagine the Loch Ness monster could look like. Mm. Oh, you're quite fascinated by that, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what? I've got another question. Great research, Michael. Yeah, I've got another question. What does? You've seen those types of sea dragon on David Attenborough. Oh, good old David Attenborough. <laughs> One of the best people in the world, I think. So I'm just adding, I should have said this, I'm just adding in the spots now. There's, what oh, we're doing for time. Oh. Doing all right for time, considering I was you I'm out of practice. How, like, you know how they look really big in the pictures? Are they quite tiny? Does it say how big they are? Oh my goodness. Oh, that's just a standard seahorse. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, one washed up. The dead one, so I won't show you that one. Yeah. But what about the weedy sea dragon? How big are they? We oh that's the wrong thing. Showing. Is Michael going to draw one of those? I, do you know, if I knew if I knew it existed, I probably would have chosen that as our reference image today because they are beautiful and the colours. It's like something out of a fantasy film. It doesn't look real. All toys are one in the hand. Yeah, so they're obviously quite difficult to. No, just look up the measurements. Look up the size rather than try and get a rel relative point. Oh my god. What? Oh, I've seen these blue dragons. Again, I thought these uh, were, I'm getting so distracted. <laughs> I thought these were not real, but they are actual animals, creatures, blue dragons as they're called. But they that's just out of this world, isn't it? The weirdy sea dragons, David Attenborough's favourite animal. <gasps> and he wrote me a letter back and told me from Oscar. Oh my word! That's amazing. You can write to David Attenborough. Wait, How do we do this? <laughs> we need this information. <laughs> we can knock on his door. David, we're huge fans. <laughs> oh wow, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that with us. Oh, here we go. Oh, so the blue sea dragon is tiny in the human's hand. Yeah, it's lovely. We're glad we're not trying to draw one of those. Yeah. <laughs> it's so small. The blue sea dragon? Yeah. Yeah. It's like a Pokemon. Yes. You, uh, but you can see how Pokemon get their inspiration yeah. from the natural world. You can see the sort of animals that they've looked at. Mm. I wonder, wait, is the Loch Ness monster a real thing? Nobody knows. 
It's been sightings, but so I'm going in with the water now. Sorry, I should have said so. Um, I'm just using a watercolor brush, but I'm going with my one of finer ones. I say this a lot, but for the benefit of those that haven't heard, don't overload your, your brush with water because it then it just goes on your page and it's very difficult to control. So, really small amounts of water, you have to just keep refilling the brush with water, loading it out with water, if that makes sense. So. Oh, Scottish people have seen like sightings, not the actual thing, but like, like in night time. Yeah, so people have seen things, but it's never enough, like in terms of footage, for to convince everybody. Let's talk about it a lot less monster now. So yeah, we just go off on a tangent. You can see loads gets done in our house. But this does look like a little picture. Seb loves Pokemon too. You were obsessed for a while, weren't you, Michael? What not no. with po no with Pokemon. Oh, yeah, that looks like a real picture. That's not. No. Uh, Freya wrote to David Amperett and got a card saying thank you, but you get so many letters you can't respond to them all. But that, oh, that's cool. I didn't know that you, there was a postal address that you could send stuff to. So that's, you know, just another thing that we've added to our to-do list. Not for the, not for the kids, for me. <laughs> I'm going to write my letter. My childhood hero. Oh, my God, that's so small. That looks like a tiny. Yeah, it's a good point, Jojo. But that's the beauty of home education, though. Find something interesting, learn more about it. You're not restricted to. Oh no, that's not on our timetable today. Could this be Just the, go with the flow. Could this be the Loch Ness monster? I like Luminion. It's a blue fish. Is that a real fish, or is that to do with Pokemon? I'm not sure now. Luminion, a Pokemon. A minion is a Luminium. Luminium. Google it, Michael. Google it. <laughs> so when I'm um, painting, you might have noticed, I tend to focus on a, an area and I'll focus on that tone. So, for example, right now I'm focusing on the sandy tone. And then I'll focus on a, the contrasting tone, so the darker, t uh, the lighter tone. And then I'll try and mix them in between so that you have it blending together and not such... Um, such a quick change between the light and darker tone. So I did the dark, I'm going to the, the lighter, and then they meet up so that you've got this transition between the cut two tones. <gasps> that is um, and that creates several more tones as well by doing that. That is, yeah, it is. The mega one. Michael's gone to Pokemon now. Oh my, God. <laughs> oh my. yeah, that is cool. I've still got loads of my Pokemon cards. Erin's I have done. Does that mean you're done as in you finished the work? Well done. Well, you don't have to hang about. You can if you just want to hang out with us. Right. But I might have some more, some more facts for you. I might uh, switch my screen so I can see them because my memory, working memory is shocking and I can't remember them. What have we got? What ones haven't I read out? So they propel themselves by the small fin on their back, which flutters up to 35 times per second. What other animal do you know that what moves in that way and it's also tiny? Uh, isn't it a... It's not a marine animal. No. What type of bird? They're called... Can you describe what they look like? Ah. Oh. I know it. But... Anybody else? What other animal moves really, really quick? It's very small. It's a bird, and it moves very, very fast Not in order to in order to move itself around or hold itself. You can see it, can't you? You just can't think of a name. It's not a robin. No, no, no. Oh. Let's see if anyone's got it. Hummingbird, that's yes. It. <laughs> it's one of those, oh, yes, that's yeah. the one. Yes, that's right. So funny, isn't it? They're both tiny, tiny little creatures and they flutter. I mean, I don't know the fact of hummingbirds, but again, I know it's lots of times per second their wings move really quickly. So you can't even see the wings move. It just looks like a blur. Are like really colourful. Yeah, they normally are, aren't they? Joe, oh, I know. <laughs> Too late, Joe. Daisy got in first. <laughs> Um, we only have felt tips and printed paper, so find this interesting. You can draw on anything using anything. It's still artwork, so it's good to be resourceful and, you know, 
use what you have around. But if you're wanting to get more involved with it, this is my favourite medium, watercolour pencils. You can get you can get cases and tins of them relatively cheap. You don't need great big cases like what I've got because you can just mix colours together. But it's easier to use than watercolour paints alone. Watercolour paints alone can be tricky to master and to, to sort of direct where the paint goes. So really? watercolour pencils, yeah, I think this is a good sort of, I'm not a good watercolour painter, but with watercolour pencils, it's so versatile, you can do more things with it. So you can just use them as normal colouring pencils. No, I haven't been able to go fly backwards. Oh, you weren't at all. You didn't say really because <laughs> I was saying something interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I haven't been able to go fly backwards. Mm. Um, yes, really? so I would recommend investing in a, in a pack if you're getting into art at all. I just think... They only cost a couple of quid more than normal colouring pencils, a half decent set of normal colouring pencils. So it's worth doing because you can do this sort yeah, of thing with it. You turn your pencil drawing into a painting. Oh, your pencils. And so every time we do the draw alongs, this is what I use. And, I, and this is a watercolour paper. So it's a thicker, more absorbent paper. You can you can still use watercolour pencils on normal paper. Um, it's just that you sometimes get that wrinkled effect because you put water on the paper, whereas... This absorbs the water and it doesn't do that. Imagine a hummingbird going backwards. Do they have in Go on. What are they called? The sensor that a truck has. <laughs> a reverse in par parking sensor. <laughs> beep, beep. Or maybe it's a hum. Yeah. <laughs> Mark's finished already. I didn't know you were there, Mark. Hello. Awesome, can't wait to see yours. Doing fantastic work on your entry level as well, by the way, Mark. Very impressed with it. Um, yeah, have you have you used the, these colours or have you gone with something different? Don't forget to sign it as well. I don't Did you sign yours? Mm -hmm. You're welcome, Mark. So the dolphin next week won't be so colourful because obviously... It'll be grey and blue. No. Well, yeah, I think it'll probably be grey tones, blue tones. But we'll probably spend a bit more time just getting the accuracy of the shape of the dolphin because that can be tricky. I might need to move to a bigger paintbrush. What am I doing for time? Ten minutes. We're good, we're good. Amy, yes, signed, ready to share. So, again, just a reminder, don't share onto this post or any of the other posts you're looking for. Later on this evening, there'll be a post put up around 6 o'clock and it'll be a picture of my drawing. And that's the one you need to share your image to, else I am likely to miss it and not see it. Then I'll be online later giving you your feedback. And if you know other home, I've done it again. Look, I always put my finger in it and then smudge my page. So clumsy. Um, if you know any other home editor families that are interested in artwork, let them know that we're here doing this for free. And even if you can't or they can't make the time, the live will stay on for as long as Facebook allows it, basically. We have found that some of our lives get sort of removed after so long. We don't really know why. It's a random amount of them. Um, but it, our draw alongs at the moment are staying up for at least a couple of weeks, so they should be okay to watch back retrospectively, especially if you miss, especially this time of year. We're finding it as well with some of Michael's scheduled lessons that um, we want to get out and about in the sun <laughs> when it comes, when it shows up. So don't feel like you have to necessarily be following our timetable because it will be available for you after. I am going to start uploading these to YouTube as well, so that they've always we've always got them because we lost a lot of content a couple of months ago, unfortunately. And then what was I going to say? Oh, I'm going live twice this week, twice more this week, and Joe. So we are going to be talking about. So on Thursday, I'm doing a general live. I think it's three o'clock, where I'm talking about our courses again. If you're already on the courses, you know all about it anyway. If you're not and you're interested to find out more, Thursday is just going to be a general Q&A. So I'm going to explain how our courses work, the ones towards formal qualifications, um, how they work and how they can be used in place of GCSEs. 
And then Friday, we are doing, me and Joe are going live to talk specifically about our photography course that we've been planning for a little while now. And we've got um, more to share with you on that. So for anyone that was interested in it, Michael is actually going to be doing the photography course in September. Um, and then from next week, so every Thursday and Friday for like the next month now, I'll be going live talking about each of our provisions. So if you're on one of our courses and you want to find out more about others, might be that you're not ready to do another one yet, but you want to find out more and, and figure out which ones you do want to find out about and might want to do in the future, then come along and say hi. Because otherwise it's just me talking to myself, which is a bit sad. What have we got? Oh, we've got loads of messages. Bye, Mark. Sorry, I didn't see that earlier. Erin, I love your drawing. Thank you. What is your seahorse called? Oh, I don't know. Sarah. Oh, no, I said a boy. Um, I can't take Sam. Someone's, oh, I'm going to have to come back to that. Um, we are finished. Thank you from Oscar and Pi. What sort of photography is it? It's going to be digital photography, Daisy. And we are very keen to make it as affordable and inclusive as possible. So what we are saying is you don't need to have a digital SLR camera you don't need a fancy piece of equipment the whole course is being written so that you can easily do it with um, a smartphone or a tablet it doesn't it's not going to require you to buy extra equipment so it's going to be very in, encouraging you to be as creative and find your own style of working as possible so still quite free and open but teaching you skills techniques oh Joe's Joe's talking about it you mentioned anyway she said we'll be covering the course content in the live on Friday including the styles you can follow so we'll be able to give you some visual examples as well on Friday and explain it in more detail um Joe's excited to have Michael and, and my niece Erin is going to be joining as well so yeah so you're going to be doing it together Oscar wants to know more about the mixed media course, which is one of my favourites. Um, that will be coming up in a couple of weeks. So if you look on our events page, you'll be able to see um, when each one is. I can't remember off the top of my head when, when mixed media is, but it's not it's not this week. So the earliest it's next week, but I'll dub, uh, if you check on the events, you'll see. And if you are interested in them, if you obviously if you just click that you're attending or interested, then you will be able to, it will remind you when it's coming up. Um, yeah, I don't think I told you that, Joe. Yeah, Erin's joining us too. Um, it's looking like a really good group. Um, well, all our groups are amazing, let's face it. So, yeah, it'll be an opportunity. I'll be able to show you, especially with the courses that are already running, we'll be able to show you examples of what other things have been able to do on their course and explain the sorts of things you'll be covering. And, and you can ask questions. That's the idea of us doing it as a live rather than a recording. You can actually ask any questions you've got as well. If you can't make the live and you think you're going to have some questions, email them to me and I'll answer them in the live as well. So um, I finished, I've signed it. Now, normally I would probably have gone back and gone done some dark highlights and stuff, but I think I'm quite pleased with how my seahorse looks. I quite like that it's a bit sort of softer and gentler. So I'm gonna leave him there. I've got some guidelines I can rub out there and make it look a bit smarter. But I'm quite pleased with that. That's not bad for a first week back. Not too shabby at all. And you know, happy bonus. I managed to get the whole picture on the page, which if you know me at all, know that's quite an achievement. So <laughs> good start to the term. Next week is our dolphin. And I'll have some facts on that as well. Um, let me just double check. I haven't missed some interesting facts for you because obviously this crosses over into marine biology and a bit of science. Um, their eyes, both of their eyes, like a chameleon, they move independent from one another. So that's pretty cool. They have no teeth and no stomachs. And food passes through their digestive system so quickly that they have to eat constantly to stay alive. That's a bizarre. Um, da -da -da. They have prehensile towels, similar to a monkey's towel. They you have to use it to grip onto things like seagrass and anchor themselves. And that was it. That was all the facts. So I've, you know, ticked a couple of boxes for your learning there, guys. Um, I'll see you next week, hopefully, if you enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, we've got our draw on again. Mm -hmm. And anyone who wants to just join us Thursday and Friday, so like I say, Thursday's the generic one. If you're not familiar with any of our courses now they work, that's a really good one to come along to anyway. And then Friday, we're specifically looking at the photography course, how that's going to work. Um, and also, if you didn't know about the photography, it's at a 25% discount because it's our first cohort this year. So it's going to be the cheapest you'll be able to get it. And your level one um, learners will also get first dibs when we launch the level two to start next September. 
um, both courses will be written in full as they are launched. So you'll be able to fast track through them both as well. So, but we'll talk about that more from on Friday. See you all later. Bye. Thank you. Bye.